invite the praise team to come on up what the praise team to come Who? on up I don't know. scatter scatter Let's invite the praise team up and if you guys would stand and pray with me we'll get this started Lord, we thank you for this uh, wonderful day that you've given us, God. We thank you for the rain. After all the heat, it is good to have rain. And Lord, we just thank you for it. God, we thank you for the week that uh, the youth have had at the camp, at fire youth camps, Lord. And we just thank you for 
blessing us with a place to come together as a family to worship you. Lord, I just ask that you fill this place with your Holy Spirit as we, uh, as we worship. Lord, I ask that you would, uh, that you would just guide this service, Lord, in, in a way that we can bring honor to you, uh, bring people closer to you, and that we can grow in love of you, Lord. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Y'all ready for church this morning? You ready, Chris? Y'all ready to praise God no matter what's going on around us? We're going to lift our hands. We're going to praise Jesus no matter whether it's a good day or a bad day. God is good no matter what. Amen. Go ahead, Joe. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I found in a desert place to walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name 
When the sun's shining down on me When the world's all as it should be Blessed be your name Blessed be your name On the road marked with suffering Though there's pain in the offering Blessed be your name Amen. How many of y'all know that God's presence is more important than anything? In God's presence, miracles take place, right? So we want and desire to be in your presence this morning, Lord. Lord, we want to see what you can do in this service. Lord, we want to see what you can do in our life today. Lord, we need you. Lord, we need you more than we've ever needed you before. And Lord, I ask you to, to move. Holy Spirit, have your way in this house with the people of this house today. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears appear the hour I first believed my chains are
My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbid to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever mine. My chains. Amazing grace, my chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love. Yeah. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord Most High. You hid. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is.
Let's just keep declaring that for a minute. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. Keep singing it. Let's sing it again. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful declare now Jesus is Lord in this house. Amen. I declare now life and not death. I declare Amen. that Jesus' name is above all and everything else will bow in Jesus' name. I speak directly to the lies, to the lies of the enemy. You will be silent in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for who you are able to overcome anything our God that is so good so good Lord we thank you Lord we worship you this morning we lift you above everything and every situation going on around us Lord today is your day your day Lord for our worship our praise Lord we glorify you your name above everything Lord Lord we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's just give God a hand this morning. Awesome job, worship team. Awesome job. Good morning. Y'all can have a seat. Good morning. It's the last Sunday of the month. So you guys will know what that means. It means it's communion day. It's one of Matthew's favorite days, one of our favorite days, where we get to commune with our Lord and take of the sacraments, the blood, uh, the bread and the juice. Um, just one little, uh, I was reading my devotional Bible, and there was a, a, a part in there about communion that spoke with me about a couple of months ago. And I took it to Kevin, and I was like, hey, hey, read this, read this. And he was like, that'd be great. And I said, so the next time we do communion, I can do it. And he was like, yeah, but you need to trim that down a little bit. <laughs> you can't read that whole thing. So I went through, and I kind of paraphrased what she said in the Bible, but I want to share that with you guys as they're passing out the, the sacraments. When Jesus broke bread at the Last Supper, he commanded his disciples to continue the practice. He wants us to continue to break bread together for two reasons. Number one, to remember him. And number two, to proclaim his death and resurrection until he returns. In Luke 22, starting with verse 14, it says, When the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. Jesus said, I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now, and I'll... For I, for I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until the meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup of wine and gave thanks for it. Then he said, take this and share it among yourselves. For I will not drink this wine again until the kingdom of God comes. He took some bread and gave it to God and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body for which I is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and he said, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an, agree an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. And then over in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-five and 26, 
In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time that you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. In Acts, we see a group of believers who remember Jesus' sacrifice every day. Every day they broke bread. Thank you. Every day they broke bread, remembering how his body was broken across, on the cross for their sins. Every day. Every day they remembered the redemption, how they had been offered, the, the, the redemption they had been offered and the gift they had received through faith. Every day the disciples did this. When we take communion, we're reminded of the new covenant God established through Jesus. We remember that God keeps his promises and that he granted us life and redemption through Jesus. We remember that through faith alone that we are saved all because of what Christ has done for us. Ephesians 2, 8 says God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for that. There's nothing that you can do to take credit for that. It's a gift from God. Let us be faithful to always remember his sacrifice, to model the generosity of the early church, and to praise God together with joyful and humble hearts. And remember, they did this every day. God doesn't ask us to take these specific, sacri these specific sacraments every day, but all he requires is for us to praise him every day and to love him every day and to follow him every day. So, so as we move on, let's take our bread. Jesus, I want to thank you for being willing to be our sacrifice so that we may be free from sin. Thank you for taking all of the punishment onto yourself so that we might one day live with you eternally in heaven. Thank you for interceding for us. Now take your bread. Now the juice. Father, I pray that we will remember daily what you have done for us on the cross. Daily we will remember where you, have, you alone have brought us from, and that if we let you, you'll guide us through whatever we have facing us in the future, because you are the God of yesterday, today, tomorrow, and evermore. May whatever we face be done in your time for our good and for all of your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, kids, are y'all ready for, are you ready for kids' class? Go ahead. All right, I'm going to start first with the annou um, announcements. And then, uh, Gary, if you want to go ahead and start passing out the, doing the baskets and the offering and prayer request sheets. Um, announcements. July 6th, which is a week from this Wednesday, is the first Wednesday at Calvary and Johnson City at, um, down there before we join together with them. On July 10th is the outdoor baptism service uh, behind the Park McDonald's like we do every year. Um, if you want to be baptized, please let Matthew know. Uh, they, um, there'll be a dinner after that as well, like normal. Um, camp fire starters, July 20th through the 23rd. Raquel is in charge of that. If you'd like to help and be a counselor, um, please let her know. Any capacity will be greatly appreciated. Then um, definitely be in prayer if you can't physically help to be there. July starts our fun food and fellowship every Tuesday. There are sign-up sheets on the back table. Uh, we help with food prep, to set up tables, to tear down tables, to set up games, all that kind of stuff. Um, so we just want to get together and have fun and just love on each other. Uh, also, Terry has asked uh, take, uh, take up donations, and he said that they are greatly appreciative for the things that we have brought to them in bulk that they are not able to get otherwise. And if there's anything that if you haven't been able to donate or you forgot to bring your stuff, just see Terry. He's go he goes down there every week, so he can take it down there anytime. Um, but that would be also greatly appreciated. Um, I, have now I have something to read to you from Matthew. Um, most of you saw that prayer request that he put out on the church Facebook church um, app yesterday. So he sent me this this morning and asked me to read it. 
About 10 days ago, Esther's left eye began to look a little crooked, kind of like a lazy eye. About a week before, Cherish had found a small tick on her head. Last week, she had a couple of eye appointments that resulted in her getting an MRI for, on Friday at the hospital in Roanoke. The MRI revealed a soft tissue mass pressing on her left eye. She was diagnosed with limes, but at this point, we're not thinking that the problem with her eye is related to the limes. Last night, Esther was transferred to the University of North Carolina Hospital in Durham, North Carolina. The team and the team at UNC are working to determine what it is and what our next steps are. She's doing really well and she isn't feeling bad. She's just a little scared. She doesn't have any symptoms except for her eye being a little out of alignment. Thank you for your prayers. So as we go into our prayer, um, our prayer time, we definitely need to remember Esther. Uh, we need to remember Sonia and her family as they go through the loss of Betty, her mother-in-law. Can you continue to remember Ken? Wonderful to see Ken here. Um, but God's at work. No matter the situation, no matter who we are, no matter what we're into, God is at work in everything that we go through. So let's uh, pray over our prayer requests and our offering and all of that. Heavenly Father, we come to you again. Lord, our hearts are heavy for little Esther. Lord, we pray for your healing. We know that you have this in control. We know that you know exactly what this is. But Lord, the humanness in us gets a little scared. And Lord, we pray that you will be with her. We pray that you be with Matthew and Cherish and their entire family, her sisters. Because we know she's in your hands and we know that you will protect her. We know that there's nothing that can happen to Esther that you don't have control of. Thank you for everything that you've done for Ken. We, Lord, we love seeing them walk through the door this morning. So thankful that he felt well enough to be here. We thank you for them and the things that they do for this church here. And even when they're not here, we thank you for their prayers. Lord, we pray for Sonia and her family. We know this is a tough time for them all. We know the struggle that she's going through. Loss is never easy. But Lord, we know that, that Betty is with you. And we know what a joyous reunion she had when she came into your presence. Lord, we thank you for that assurance that one day we'll see her again. And Lord, all the things that were written down on the prayer request sheets, all the things that were put into the prayer request box, in the past. Lord, we pray for those as well. Lord, we know that you have complete and total control over every situation that we are in. And we thank you so much for interceding for us and for, for your Holy Spirit to comfort us and for us to be able to commune with you and to talk with you directly without the need of a high priest to come in and do that for us. We thank you for everything that you've done and will be doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Not yet. There it is. All right. So, as most of you guys know, this week we had the fire youth camp. And uh, Matthew would love to be here right now to talk about it. This was his passion project. Uh, 20, it was, this is the 24th year I found out. 24 years. And 24 years... I think he's always been able to be up here to talk to the kids, to the youth, to get people to come up and give testimonies. Uh, this year he's not, for obvious reasons, he's not going to be here today to do that. But I still would like to ask the youth, who, uh, who is here that attended the camp?
counselors included. All right, if you guys would feel comfortable to come up and I'd like for you guys to talk about camp a little bit and everything. This year, uh, if you can see, I have the camp t-shirt on. This was designed, it was the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. And I really liked these shirts until I put it on. And then when I put this shirt on, I didn't like it as much because I was like, man, it shows my muscles off too much. <laughs> and particularly the muscles in this region all around here. I was like, I don't like this shirt as much as I did originally. But, uh, you know, camp, camp was awesome. And uh, the services were great. And for me personally, uh, this was my first year really being dedicated to spend an entire uh, week at camp. I hadn't done it. It's not my thing. You know, I'm not going to lie. Like, I told Matthew, I was like, spending a week at camp with the teenagers, like, I love teenagers for a few hours at a time, but like, sleeping in the bunks with them, things like that, I did it's not my thing. And he was just encouraged me to try it out. So we compromised. I was there every day, but I didn't sleep there. I would leave, go home, take a shower, get that nasty camp sweat off of me. Um, but it was it was beautiful and um, it was it was a beautiful thing so I would like to start with the camp queen uh, Evie if you would like to talk about camp a little bit um, well like Kevin said I got camp queen which is basically they award a camp king and a camp queen every year at the end of camp and it's to um, like give them an award, like give a certain person an award for being helpful and being a good um, uh, influence on the younger campers and like just basically they have to be in, do every activity or be, go to prayer every morning and stuff like that. So I was camp queen and also my team won, which Elisa was my counselor. So yeah. <laughs> this will be this was my uh 12th year going to camp e each year for me <laughs> Each year for me gets scarier. Just knowing how I have to try to take care of each one of these campers and watching them grow up, mature, and influence other other younger campers. Seeing some of the campers, of course, that don't go to this church become counselors really insanely scary but it, but at the same time it's a wonderful feeling knowing that they're pursuing that and keeping going forward that um I think it was a Friday night no Thursday night they called up an altar call for the uh, second night, I went up there and just closed my eyes, raised my hands, just not worried about anything else. God told me a, a um, thing and said, uh, lead and they will follow. And I've been running from that forever. I just feel like I need to pursue that further. And just knowing I've known each and one of these since birth is really scary. Really? <laughs> no, not in a bad way, it's just it's, it scares me knowing that they're growing up and making their own decisions and hoping they make the right ones. And <clears throat> hoping I've been a good influence on them. And this camp has been amazing. It really has. Um, 
Well, camp was fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't win. Uh, we didn't. Our team didn't win. We were kind of losers. <laughs> but not as big as blue team. <laughs> It's actually four. All of them, yeah. yeah all of them. So here's the loser. <laughs> <laughs> we only lost because we had like short people on our team. <laughs> <laughs> we had no athletic people, so don't you dare say anything like that. We only had one athletic person. It was like, I don't know. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I think camp was a really great experience to see a lot of people that have been in public school that feel like they can't really be themselves. And they really do, you see like from the first day to the fourth day, they really become less, they really care a lot less about what other people think about what they're doing. And yeah, you see the kids that are really secluded on the first day and they'll be like, on the last day they'll be on their knees praising. And it is, it is a very beautiful thing. Yeah, um, camp is one of, that's, that's what I really like about camp too. I noticed there was a lot of, the. it is very clear. There's like an age where all of a sudden none of them are confident. Like a lot of them at the beginning during the games would be like, okay, so who's good at running? They'd all be like, no, not me, not me. And then towards the end, they all kind of built up this confidence to like step up. And um, also the worship is really beautiful because you see these kids, a lot of them will be very stone cold and very like hardened to wanting to be emotional or wanting to praise. And usually on the last night, they are able to just not focus on what's around them. And a lot of hurting will come out on that last night. And it is really beautiful. And that's all. Yeah, um, one of the, the most joyful parts of being there this week was seeing um, the used to be teenagers like Jake. Uh, I remember him when he was little. I had him in children's church and seeing Elisa and Keaton uh, growing up and being leaders to these teenagers now. And it was great. But it was such a it was so uh, it was so fun to watch Jake in action. Me and Matthew would just sit and watch him, and we were like, "Man, he just loves being here and loves these guys." But it was it was a thing where my what Matthew was trying to get me to do was just kind of learn the camp and be there if something was to go down and I needed to 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 step in. But if Jake was there, I didn't have to worry about it. I mean, because he just had his eyes on everybody so it was like moments like they'd be in a pool and as a parent your kids in the pool you you're watching that pool uh, but Jake's over there so I'm like Jake's got it need people rounded up Jake had them it was just a, a great thing but um, there was one really beautiful moment that at the worship service at camp and um, it was uh, when Sarah Hurley, she got up and she she just spoke from her heart, and it just blessed me so much. And she prayed over the the kids. And I don't I don't want to put you on the spot too much, but uh, would you come and pray over the kids again? of God put on my heart was it's just surrendering everything to him and I really I just I want to pray with the kids is that I just feel like this generation that's coming through are they're being attacked on a such a fundamental level that none of us actually had to go through as kids or I just don't know has happened in the history of the world and yet I know that God is doing something really great in their hearts and um 
Jesus told Peter, he said, Satan has asked for you that he could take you and crumble you like wheat and cast you um, to the wind. He said, but I have prayed for you that you will stand strong in our temptation. And, and now we look at Peter as one of the pillars of the early church. But I feel like this is what Satan has asked for this generation. But we, we must pray. We must pray for them because God has an amazing plan for his church in this generation. And so I just, if y'all would just pray with me over, over our kids in particular because I just, I have such a love. I know how Jake feels. I think we all miss just this, um, like, protective love for these kids and so I just let's just join pray for them but beyond even our children here just lifting up this generation of young people so Lord we just lift we lift this generation up to you we know that Satan does want to derail them to throw them off but Lord you have such an awesome plan for them a plan that cannot be stolen by anything that your love is greater than any any plan and Lord I pray that that the Satan has that your plans always is the one that succeeds and so Lord we just pray over these kids Lord that they will be have such a fervent passion for you and know your love in such a real intense way that there will be nothing that they are not willing to go through nothing that they will not be willing to stand up for give up whatever the call that you have in their future that they will want to walk in this because just like Jesus you said the Word says that you endured the cross because of the joy that was set before you. So, Lord, we pray for this joy, this supernatural understanding of what you have prepared for us and who you are and how you love us and what you did for us on Calvary. Lord, I pray that you just put this supernaturally in the hearts and the minds of this generation, of this coming generation of the church. Lord, we pray this in your name, Jesus, that this seed that you planted in their hearts over camp through their upbringing, Lord, that this will go deep and it will just have a term tremendous harvest and nothing can still it nothing can crowd it out we pray protection over the word in their hearts in your name jesus amen thank you all right guys anybody have anything else they want to share he has to go next year who's that Haley. Haley, yes. She had to balance work. She showed up when she could but she had to balance her job out but, yeah so is anybody else all right, you guys can take your seats. Appreciate you guys. All right, can you hear me? Hear me? Awesome. All right, so um, last night, um, you know, I didn't know which way things were going to go. We didn't know for sure for a, for a little while if Matthew was going to be here. If he wasn't, he was 100% ready to be here. Uh, and he was really wanting to be here. Um, we were messaging fairly late last night even. Like he was letting me know he had, his, he had done his sermon, got everything ready, finished it up at the hospital. And uh, I, I was planning on teaching the children's church today. That was my plan. And I, I was going to, I wanted to, you know, let Elisha uh, be able to sit with her husband and her family because it seems like a lot of times she'll come in and she has to go out and take care of kids. And um, But then things got flipped around. And, uh, and so I, I, I got something ready. Um, we do need to pray for Alicia though because I was going to be back there and um, and then I had got Chris as a possible backup too and uh, I'd set up a soccer game back there so <laughs> she's she's back there with the kids and there's a soccer net and a soccer ball so <laughs> let's let's uh, let's uh, just hope that they go easy on her today uh, so I have to tell her I'm sorry later and I set her up like that. Um, but yeah, just so appreciative for those who have stepped in on short notice because uh, we're supposed to be ready in season and out of season and it's easy to say, sometimes it's harder to do. If you guys would turn with me to uh, Mark uh, chapter 12, 
and we're going to read in verse 28. When you're there, say amen. So, uh, you know, going through camp, we had a, a speaker. We were speaking on the truth. And I really feel like we prepared the campers for truth. I really feel like the speaker was speaking truth. The counselors were just throwing truth at them. And uh, it was awesome. But yesterday, uh, it was another one of those moments where Matthew was planning on speaking at the chapel and the last chapel service on Saturday. And that was his plan. He had to leave and go to Roanoke uh, right after the, uh, the service Friday night. So he wasn't going to be able to be there. I think it's the first time in 24 years that he wasn't able to be there. He was even there last year. In the shape he was in last year, he even was there then at the, on the last day. So uh, it was one of those moments where I, I was like, okay, I'm going to get ready, get prepared just in case I need to. Uh, in the end, I didn't need to. I didn't have to speak. But as I was praying about like what I wanted to share with the campers on their little last um, last moment at camp, where they were going to go back out into the world and uh, you know leave the isolation of being around like-minded people and leaders that love them, care about them, won't think any question stupid, and they uh, I wanted to share with them. And uh, what I thought about was how to love people. How to love people. So if you will read with me from verse 20, chapter 12, verse 28. Then one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Lord, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And this is the first commandment. And the second like it is this you shall love your neighbor as yourself and there is no other commandment greater than these let's pray Lord we just thank you God we thank you that you have everything in your hands God that it's not up to us to control anything Lord we thank you that that you love us enough to be here with us today. Lord, we ask your blessing over this study that we're about to do. Lord, I ask you to help me, to give me courage as I, as I speak, to keep me humble. Lord, I ask that you would guide my words, that, that I would represent you and, and not my own opinions. Lord, I ask that you open every heart up in here today that, that they would receive your word. God, that they would allow your word to change their hearts. God, that we would allow your word to affect every decision we make in life. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so love is a complicated subject. Does anybody disagree with that? Pretty complicated. We have uh, the world's version of love. We have our version of love. And then we have God's version of love, right? Yeah. So it's kind of funny. Um, when I was speaking, I had the opportunity to speak at one of the chapel services for the middle school group and to talk to them. And... We were doing a little bit of apologetics thing, but I felt the Lord telling me to speak to them about God's image and to kind of give them a definition of marriage 
in that. And, and my definition of marriage that I presented to them was based on the image of God and about how in the beginning God created man in his image and then he took man and created female like he divided it. He said it was not good. He divided his image and created male and female. And my definition for marriage for them was that marriage is God's image reunited. That's the definition of marriage. So if you take a male and a male or a female and a female, that, that can never reunite God's image. So the only way that God's image is reunited as the two become one is through male and female, husband and wife. They create that family unit, and that is God's image, God's perfect image, united. And, and that was love, and that, that is... That is what marital love is and, and everything. But I just, uh, I thought it was important to talk to them because the world is attacking love. Just the, just the topic of love is, is being attacked. Uh, yesterday I made the mistake of getting on Facebook for a minute. And while I'm on Facebook, um, this minister that I've known for years, years, spirit-filled guy, charismatic speaker, um, good man, but he was on there with somebody and he was singing a song. You know, it was a secular song, but over it was saying like, happy pride month. Like, happy pride, you guys are so brave. And this was a minister that I had respected. And, and I see him taking the word of God and just throwing it in the trash and picking up the word of the culture. You know? And it, it's sad to see stuff like that happen. And it is so important, like what Sarah's prayed, so, so important. But it requires us you know, to model that love. To model what real love is and to teach what love is, to show it. So, Jesus was, uh, was asked by someone what the greatest commandments were and, and you can look at all the commandments and then you can narrow down the Ten Commandments and Jesus didn't pick just one little commandment. He he summarized everything into two things. That is love God, love people. Um, it's pretty easy to, to love God. And I would say that you can't love people without loving God. And some people would disagree with me. Some atheists would say, I, I love people. I'd say, well, it's possible to love a person. But people... People are a mess. Loving people, period, is pretty hard. But when you get into the subject of love, you have to, you have to break down what the Bible says about love. And, uh, it's, hey, Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Isn't that like the Jewish wedding ceremony where they wrap the glass up and stomp it? Have you guys ever seen that? Yeah, it's funny. Not that she's getting married anytime soon. <laughs> oh. um, so anyway, there's four words in the Greek language for love. And when we're reading through our New Testament, we'll see the word love sometimes. And we, we, we don't know exactly which Greek word has been translated to love there. So it confuses us sometimes. So we have uh, four words. The first one is, I believe it's pronounced storge. And if Charlie Berg was here, he could tell me because he can read and write ancient Greek because, you know, he's smart. Um, but storge is one word for love, and that means the love for things. You know, that's where you would be like, I love, I love pizza or I love that type of music. You know, I love this camp shirt that hugs my belly tighter than I wish it, you know. 
I love this shirt. Um, the second one is Eros. Eros is, um, to put it delicately, uh, delicately uh, we'll say marital love. Everybody following? All right, Eros, marital love. And phileo is the love of friendship, uh, which is like when Jesus spoke to Peter uh, after he, you know, before his ascension, and they jump. Peter jumps out of the boat, and Jesus is like, "Do you love me?" Uh, Peter's answer, he's like, "Do you love me?" And Jesus is saying one type of love. Peter says, "I phileo you." So Jesus repeats it three times because Jesus is asked. Ask, asking this third one, this fourth one, agape. Agape is a selfless, sacrificing love. So when Peter jumps out of the boat and he's sitting there, he had denied Jesus three times, Jesus is asking him, Peter, do you agape love me? Do you selflessly, self-sacrificingly, do you love me that way? And Peter would respond to him, I phileo you. I love you with all the friendship but at this moment, Peter was being honest. He was saying that. And you can lose, do you understand how you can lose this? Because it's just love, love, love. But if you really get into the Greek language, you can see the difference. And then Jesus asks him again, Peter, do you love me self-sacrificingly, selflessly? And Peter says, God, I, I have you as my brother with all the friendship love I can throw at you. And then the third time, Jesus says, Peter, do you phileo me? Do you love me with that brotherly love? And then Peter answers again, I love you, phileo. And it's Jesus meeting Peter where he was because Peter, as you know, was that guy that would, would profess everything. You know, they all may deny you, Jesus, but I won't deny you. You know, but then we know the story. So when Jesus comes to him with that love, that's just an example of understanding the agape love compared to the other loves. And, and what Jesus is requiring is you love God and love people. You love in this way. So, I remember, uh, who remembers the Princess Bride movie? Does anybody remember this? Like, if you've watched it, you are going to say, I hate that stupid movie. Or you're going to say, this is the greatest movie that has ever been made. I fall into that. This is the greatest movie that's ever been made. And, and the whole concept in this movie is like true love. I remember me and Pam started dating. I was like, you got to watch this movie. You got to watch The Princess Bride. It's, I was like, it's, it's the most romantic movie ever made. <laughs> and she, uh, she, she started watching it. <laughs> and as quickly I realized that our connection wasn't in movie taste. Um, <laughs> But there's this part in the movie where it's like, uh, it shows like the marriage lady and they're getting ready for her. She's going to have to marry this guy. And the, the priest has a speech impediment. And he's like, do you guys remember this part? He's like, marriage, yes. marriage, two of. And it's like one of my favorite parts, but it's like true love, you know, it, it was it was express. I, I feel like it was expressed very well in that movie, what love is, um, the willing to die and stuff. But all right, let me let me move on. Let's go to John thirteen. If I can get there. John thirteen verse thirty four. John 13, verse 34. So Jesus is, uh, at this point, Jesus is at the Passover. He's having Passover in the upper room. And he has just completely flipped his disciples. Like, in this process of taking a Passover, he's telling them that he's leaving. And that they're going to be by themselves. And he has completely messed them up. You know? They, they don't understand why he's leaving, what's going on, and they don't have the hindsight that we got. We can read here and we know why Jesus was leaving, what he was saying. But to them, they were thinking like Jesus is leaving like Elijah left and that the chariot of fire is coming down, going to pick him up or whatever, and he's just going to go away like that. He's leaving them. They're panicking. 
They don't understand why he's going to go. So he says uh, in verse 34, he says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. And as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And by this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. So he didn't say that everyone will know you're my disciple because you don't say cuss words. Did he? No. He didn't say because you dress a certain way. Right? Not, he didn't say they'll know you're my disciples because you take your hat off in church. Right? Or you say yes ma'am. That wasn't what he said. He said that you love one another. And that is an easy thing to do when you actually uh, love somebody. But there are some people in this world that are just difficult to love. And when I became a Christian, I was 20 years old, and I can't tell you how many times I prayed. I prayed, God, I know you want me to love these people, but I, I just can't stand them. Like, I can't stand them. Like, I would, I would be around guys at work, and they would behave in selfish ways, you know, and I would completely ignore my selfish behavior, but I would look at their hickle. <laughs> I would ignore their, uh, their, you know, I ignore my selfish behavior, but I could look at theirs and I would just be like, I cannot believe these people act this way. Like, what is wrong with them? And I even went through a little phase where I was a Christian, so I thought I was better. Like, in my mind, I was like, I'm better than these people here. You know, like I felt like I had something one up on them. Um, so I would pray and I would say, Lord, help me love these people. I can't love them. And I would, I would just focus on that. I would just, okay. And then I would get to work where I'd get out and I'd say, okay, I'm going to love these guys. And I would get there. I'd make it like an hour. And then one of them would do something that irked me. And then I was back to praying and saying, God, forgive me for hating these people that I'm working with. And. And that is the way it is. Like, it's easy to say you love somebody, but to really love them. But see, when God requires us to love, He, he requires us to love uh, people that are really, really difficult. Like abortion doctors. I'm supposed to love an abortion doctor? A murderer? And, and I just, it's so hard to fathom being able to to love somebody like that it's hard to think you know uh, if anybody's ever read The Hiding Place Corey Ten Boom you, you know that story of how she was she was thrown in the concentration camp to the point where she sees her, her father passes away there her, her sister she sees her sister just get sick and wither away and pass away and these guards just taunting them doing cruel things to them and then later on she's faced with this this thing where she's speaking and a man comes up to her asking for forgiveness and it was one of the meanest guards there who had been mean to her dead sister and she has to come to that place where God helps her to forgive to love somebody who's unlovable And uh, so when Jesus, if we back it up, Jesus said, they said, what are the greatest commandments? Jesus said to love God and to love people. And I always thought that, were two, that was two separate things, you know, love God, love people, because it was divided. And he said the first one and the second one. But honestly, you, you can't get those out of order. You see, the mistake that I made was that I tried to love people, and then I tried to love God, and I had that separate but our focus has to be loving God. You see, when we grow in our love for Christ, loving others will become a natural side effect. I wasn't able to love others until I quit trying to love them. When I put all my focus on loving God, and I completely fed, fell head over heels in love with Christ and was like agape. 
I love you, Jesus, in this way that I will sacrifice everything. I will die to myself. Everything I am is yours. I love you that way. And as I pursued the Lord's heart that way, and I surrendered my heart to Him, I didn't realize that I'd started loving people. It was just just a natural thing. Like the next day I was loving that guy and somebody gets mad at somebody and I just, well, you know, <laughs> it's just the way it is. You know, there's people. And I started just truly loving people. I can truly say that I love those guys who do things that are horrible. I work with people who say things and do things that are just awful, but I can honestly say that I love them. It's not a lie. It's not a boast. It's just, I love God. I love people because I love God. So this love, and, and just in case we, we think it's open for interpretation, let's turn to chapter 14 in John, verse 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. You see, there's no, uh, there's no separation. No separation. We, we have to love. And there might be someone in our lives that we think of as everybody, but I can love everybody but that person. Lord, I'll, I'll meet you at this point. Like, I'll meet you halfway. I love everybody but that person. Do you remember the story of Jonah? God called Jonah to go to the, to the Ninevites. He's a prophet. His whole thing is hearing from God and telling people what God says. God tells him to go to the Ninevites and tell them. But see, God, Jonah knows God's nature. He's, the only reason he would send a prophet is if he's given them a chance he knew that God had this redeeming quality where he just, God loved the people of Nineveh. He's given them a shot. And Jonah knows this. So Jonah tries to run as far away from God as he can. He sails. He gets on a ship heading to the farthest part of the known world at that time. And then God, you know the story. God sends the storm. They cast him overboard. And he doesn't say, turn the boat around. They're like, what do we do? He doesn't say, turn the boat around and the storm will stop. He says, kill me. He would rather die. He would rather die than go to the, to the people of Nineveh. And the people of Nineveh were horrible. Like they were, when you walked into the city of Nineveh, there was just a pile of bones. Like a huge pile of bones just to intimidate anybody entering the city to say, we don't play games in Nineveh. The people of Nineveh were so cruel, they, uh, they worshipped this fish god, and they would do sacrifices to him. But one of the things they would do would take people, especially foreigners, Jewish people, they would hang them up and fillet them like a fish, <laughs> just, just put them on display, just cruelly murdering them. And this is the people that God's told Jonah to go to. But Jonah wasn't afraid to die. He wasn't afraid of the Ninevites. Because Jonah just told the people to throw him off the boat. Throw me off the boat, kill me. He gets off the boat. Of course, God doesn't allow Jonah to perish in the sea. He sends a great fish, spits him out. Jonah goes and tells the people. And, and you know, it's all part of God's plan. People worshiping a fish god. They hear of the man who was spit out by the fish coming to the city. They, of course, listen. He tells them, God's going to destroy you guys. And then they immediately, they repent, they put on sackcloth, they, they do everything they're supposed to do, they humble themselves before God. And then Jonah says, he goes up and he gets angry with God. And to paraphrase, he says, I knew that you would do this. I knew that you would 
he was angry with God for being good. He said, I knew that you would do this. And it was kind of this thing where Jonah was saying, anybody but them, Lord. You could save anybody but them. Ask me to love anybody but them. If I'm conjuring up the image of somebody in your life or somebody you know right now, anybody but them, that is probably who the Holy Spirit is calling you to forgive right now. See, the Holy Spirit requires us to let go of grudges, to let go of those hard feelings, to release. As uh, the musicians come up, wherever you guys are, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to pray. And as I, as I pray and I close out this sermon, I just want you to know that this altar is open. If you need to go to the Lord and, and release somebody, if you need to just ask God to help you, to help me love you more. Because the true test of spiritual growth isn't speaking in tongues. It isn't the laying on hands and healing. It isn't the excitement. The true test of spiritual growth in your life is loving Jesus. If you grow more in love. Because you can do everything and, and everything you want to do, but that growing in love with Jesus is what's going to change everything. It's going to make all the difference. So I just encourage you to pursue Christ with all your heart. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day, God. We, we thank you for being here with us, God. We thank you for challenging us. We thank you for loving us when we're unlovable, loving us when we're not quite able to make that step and love others the way that you want us to. Sometimes we're like Peter, Lord, and we have to say, Phileo, you're asking for agape, but we're only able to say Phileo. Lord, we just love you and we just thank you for being our Father, for taking care of us. And God, we just ask that you help us to release, to forgive, to let go. And in, that, in doing that, we can hang on to you. We just thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. This altar is open for anybody who needs it.
such a beautiful name and it's wonderful to know that we are so loved by that name to know the sacrifice that was made because he loved us so much that he wanted to be with us so much important it is for us to be willing to respond in a similar way. I know in my life I've had plenty of people that were not my favorite people. But whenever it comes down to it, if I truly love God, I'm going to truly love those people. I might not agree with what they do. I might not agree with what they say. I won't agree with how they behave. But God loves us all. And it's important for us to be able to show that love, to be willing to show that love. Because that's the only way that they're going to see God in many cases. That's going to be the only way that they're going to come to God is by the love we show them. So I want to challenge this week, even to myself. There's somebody out there, maybe you haven't been getting all that well along with, 
little grudges, whatever. Take some time and pray. Forgive them. Love them. And see the difference that it makes not only in your life, but possibly in theirs. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this time, Father, to just be in your presence, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for the word that was given, Father, and Lord, the reminder of really who we are in you, Father God, and what we are supposed to do. So, Father, give us the courage, give us the strength, Father, to love. Because it's not easy for us sometimes. We have egos. We have our, our own little hiccups, Father, and Lord, you know that. So, Father, help us, Lord, to overcome ourselves and be able to love like you love. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. And Father, we just pray that, Lord, once again, that, Lord, you would be with, with Matthew, Lord, and the family. And just, we just ask for healing, Lord. With, that, with everything there, Lord, we know that you're capable. So, Father, just be with them. Give them safety, Lord, as their travels, Father. And, Lord, we just praise you, Lord. Go with us now, Lord. Give us safety as we return to our homes, Father. And just help us, Lord, to just be the servants for you that we should be. Help us to be the light that we should be. Help us to love as we should, Father. For it's in Jesus' name that we ask it. Amen. All right. You all are released. We have food. Enjoy. Fellowship a little bit. Love you. Mean it.